Over the course of these next few videos, we'll learn how to select portions of our ZBrush asset in Mari and then paint them. In this first video, we'll learn how to target areas for painting with selections. All right, great. So here I am again inside of Mari, working with our werewolf asset. Now, we've learned in the previous module how things like shaders and channels and even layers begin to work together for an asset like this one that had several subtools over inside of ZBrush. Now, I do currently have my body object selected here, um, but I have made a couple of changes to my project that I want to let you know about. First of which is the lighting here. If we come over here and opened up the lighting palette, or the lights palette rather, uh, you'll notice that Mari is an environment that has um, a number of different lights. Now we can either choose to utilize these four lights here to get sort of a nice neutral illumination, or we can utilize this environment light here where we use essentially an image to create the lighting inside of Mari's canvas. Now that's what I've done here, so I've gone ahead and turned that off. Let me turn it back on, and I'll go ahead and turn off these four lights here. Now you can use any combination of these lights if you so chose, but just so happens I'm using the environment light for this particular example. Now I've also come in here for each one of my objects, and I've created an AI standard shader, and I've at least plugged in the appropriate channel to the diffuse color. Now, in the case of the body, I have made um, a, another change here in terms of the layers. I've added this layer right here, which is a procedural layer, and it fills the entire object of the body with this selected color right here. Now, I am going to go ahead and click up here on this layer here. Uh, this is a paint layer. It is one that we can paint on, whereas the procedural layer has this particular icon. Now, part of the process in working in Mari, especially when it comes to complex assets like this one that have a lot of detail built into them, is figuring out how we can isolate areas so that we can paint them without getting paint in areas that we really don't want it in. For example, if I were to zoom in on our werewolf here, and we'll just look at his face, and let's say we were trying to paint the inside of our wolf's mouth here. Well, he obviously has some teeth geometry here that would get in the way, and if we were to just simply start to paint, you can see that by default, here inside of Mari, it's going to allow us to paint on anything that we can see, just like so. So I'm doing this with a very uh, bright white color and with a very uh, apparent brush stroke so you can see where the paint is falling with absolutely uh, with absolute clarity here. Now, one way that we could uh, sort of get around this issue of painting on the teeth when all we really wanted to paint was the mouth would be to come over here to our objects palette and simply hide the teeth object, just like so. Now, because we've hidden it, we can't bake paint to it or we can't apply paint to that object. But this may not be the best solution for you because, say for example, that teeth geometry was actually part of the body object as well, so they were both a part of the same OBJ that we brought in, we would have to utilize a different solution in order to tell Mari that we want to paint the mouth and not the teeth. I'm going to go ahead and tap this button right here. We'll explain that here in just uh, a couple of videos uh, as far as what I just did. But let me go ahead and show you this selection tool right here. So this selection tool inside of Mari is a great tool that allows you to select based on a number of different parameters or a number of different selection modes. Now right now, I'm using this selection tool in face selection mode. That's this button right here. So you can see if I were to click and just maybe drag, we could drag sort of a lasso, sort of like that. And I can select the faces that make up our werewolf's ear. And you can see that selection is so dense it almost looks solid green. But if we were to zoom in close and look at that, you can see all those individual polys that I've selected here. 
Now, working in face selection mode can be a little tedious because by default, you're not going to select faces that the camera can't see. So if I were to orbit around like this, you can see all of these faces that were not selected using face selection mode. Now, face selection mode is something that we may want to use on a PTEX object, but remember this body mesh actually has a UV layout that corresponds to it. Let me go ahead and deselect that for just a moment here. And I'm going to switch over instead of selecting in face mode, I'm going to select in patch selection mode, which is this next button over. So remember the UV layout for this guy looks something like this. Let me just load up a split orthographic and UV view. And you can see here we have three patches and that's three different texture spaces here. So if I were to click in patch selection mode on the werewolf's head, watch what happens. We're going to select only that first patch. If we clicked on his belly, we're going to select the third patch, just like so. And if I clicked on his shoulder here, you can see we'll select that second patch. This is just how the UVs were laid out, but this is a way that we can come in and begin to target areas to receive paint. We can add to a selection by holding down the shift key uh, and clicking on another patch, just like so. Or we could subtract from a selection by holding down the control key. And you can see when I hold down these two corresponding keys, either a little plus will appear next to my cursor or a little minus. Let me just click on his arms here to subtract that selection. And the same thing works in face selection mode. Now the third selection mode here is object selection. So we're going to select entire objects. Whether we select this object here, if we clicked on maybe his pants, you can see inside the objects palette, we've automatically switched over to the pants object and so on and so forth. So there's three basic selection modes here that we can choose to use. Now you may be asking yourself, how can we use these selection modes to help us target specific areas of the asset to paint? Well, there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. The first way I want to illustrate is by showing you how we can control visibility. Now for, let's say his head, we'll just take his head for example. I'll go ahead and click on the head geometry here and we'll use patch selection mode. What I can do with a selection made is I can simply right click and I can come down here to visibility and we can choose to hide the unselected geometry. We could hide the selected geometry and then we have some showing options here. So if we wanted to hide everything but the head, we could say, I want to hide the unselected. And now we're just working on that one patch and notice how it's hidden all the other objects as well. If I right click, I can go to visibility and show all and we'll bring all those objects back. So this can give you a little bit more flexibility in terms of the visibility of objects and quickly toggling that on or off. Now another way that we can control this, let's just get back up on our face here, is we can actually come over to the projection palette here. Now inside the projection palette, there's going to be this setting called project on. And notice by default inside of Mari, this is set to all. So basically what that's telling Mari is that anytime we lay a brush stroke here, let me go ahead and just lay one down again. Anytime we lay down a brush stroke, we're going to be projecting that paint onto all pieces of geometry that fall underneath it. And that doesn't matter whether it is the body, the teeth, whatever the case may be. Now we may run into some issues in terms of what we have selected on a layer level. So let's go ahead and take a look here. I have the body geometry selected. If I came over to my layers palette, notice that I have a paint layer selected here on this object. So we could actually apply this paint to that paint layer. However, if I switch my selection over to this procedural layer, look what happens that paint disappears from the body object because we don't have a paintable layer selected here. Now we do have a paintable layer selected for the teeth object, so that's why we still see that paint here. Now that paint is still there. We haven't gotten rid of it. I can come up and select my layer here and mouse back over my orthographic view here and you can see that paint is back in its original place.
So basically, we can start to limit the way this paint is being applied uh, through a selection. Now, if we were to come over and say, I want to project on selected only, look what happens. My paint disappears. That's because I do not have a selection made. Let me jump back over here and I'll go ahead and select the body. Well, sorry, rather the head here. We'll select that head. And there we go. I'll go ahead and grab my paint tool again so we can clearly see what we're looking at here. And you can see now that I've made a selection of that head patch, that paint is only showing up on this patch. It's not actually showing up on the teeth. Because remember, the teeth are not selected right now. So we can use selections to specifically target areas for paint without having to hide our pieces of geometry, as you can see here. Now, yes, we could come in here and hide the teeth if we wanted to just completely get them out of the way. And ultimately, that may be the best solution for you. But there's a number of different ways that we can target and really um, execute best practices when it comes to painting pieces of geometry so that we can make sure the paint goes exactly where we want it to go here inside of Mari. All right, great. With that said, let's go ahead and move on to our next video and we'll learn about how we can adjust the texture resolution of our Mari objects dynamically.